Joshua chapters 12 through 14. Now these are the kings of the land which the children of Israel smote, and possessed their land on the other side Jordan toward the rising of the sun, from the river Arnon unto Mount Hermon, and all the plain on the east. Sihon, king of the Amorites, who dwelt in Heshbon, and ruined from Eroer, which is upon the bank of the river Arnon, and from the middle of the river, and from half Gilead, even unto the river Jabbok, which is the border of the children of Ammon, and from the plain to the sea of Kinneroth, on the east, and unto the sea of the plain, even the salt sea on the east, the way to Beth Jeshimoth, and from the south, under Ashdoth Pisgah, and the coast of Og, king of Bashan, which was of the remnant of the giants, who dwelt at Ashtaroth and at Edrei, and reigned in Mount Hermon, and in Salka, and in all Bashan, unto the border of the Geshurites, and the Maacathites, and half Gilead, the border of Sihon, king of Teshvon. Them did Moses the servant of the Lord, and the children of Israel smite. And Moses the servant of the Lord gave it for a possession unto the Reubenites, and the Gadites, and the half tribe of Manasseh. And these are the kings of the country which Judah and the children of Israel smote on this side Jordan on the west, from Baal Gad in the valley of Lebanon, even unto the Mount Halak. They go up to Seir, which Joshua gave unto the tribes of Israel for a possession according to their divisions. In the mountains, and in the valleys, and in the plains, and in the springs, and in the wilderness, and in the south country, the Hittites, the Amorites, and the Canaanites, and the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites, the king of Jericho, one, the king of Ai, which is beside Bethel, one, the king of Jerusalem, one, the king of Hebron, one, the king of Jarmuth, one, the king of Lachish, one, the king of Eglon, one, the king of Gezer, one, the king of Debir, one. The king of Gedur, one. The king of Horma, one. The king of Arad, one. The king of Libna, one. The king of Adullam, one. The king of Makeda, one. The king of Bethel, one. The king of Tapua, one. The king of Hefer, one. The king of Aphek, one. The king of Lasharon, one. The king of Madan, one. The king of Hazar, one. The king of Shiron Meron, one. The king of Akshaf, one. The king of Teanach, one. The king of Megiddo, one. The king of Kedesh, one. The king of Jachniam of Carmel, one. The king of Dor in the coast of Dor, one. The king of the nations of Gilgal, one. The king of Terza, one. All the kings, thirty and one. Now Joshua was old and stricken in years, and the Lord said unto him, Thou art old and stricken in years, and there remaineth yet very much land to be possessed. This is the land that yet remaineth, all the wars of the Philistines, and all Geshurai, from Sihor, which is before Egypt, even unto the borders of Ekron northward, which is counted to the Canaanite, five lords of the Philistines, and the Gazathites, and the Ashdorothites, and the Eshkelonites and the Gittites, and the Ekronites, also the Avites. From the south, all the land of the Canaanites, and Meara, that is beside the Zidonians, unto Aphek, to the borders of the Amorites. And the land of the Giblites, and all Lebanon, toward the sun rising, from Baal Gad, under Mount Hermon, unto the entering into Hamath. And all the inhabitants of the hill country from Lebanon unto Mizrephothmaim, and all the Zidonians, them will I drive out from before the children of Israel. Only divide thou it by lot unto the Israelites for an inheritance, as I have commanded thee. Now therefore, divide this land for an inheritance unto the nine tribes and the half tribe of Manasseh, with whom the Reubenites and the Gadites have received their inheritance, which Moses gave them beyond Jordan eastward, even as Moses the servant of the Lord gave them, from Eroer, that is upon the bank of the river Arnon, and the city that is in the midst of the river, and all the plain of Medeba unto Debon. And all the cities of Sihon king of the Amorites, which reigned in Heshbon, unto the border of the children of Ammon. And 
Gilead and the border of the Geshurites and Maacathites and all Mount Hermon and all Bashan unto Salca. All the kings of Og and Bashan, which reigned in Ashtaroth and in Edrei, who remained of the remnant of the giants, for these did Moses smite and cast them out. Nevertheless, the children of Israel expelled not the Geshurites, nor the Maacathites, but the Geshurites and the Maacathites dwell among the Israelites until this day. Only unto the tribe of Levi he gave no inheritance. The sacrifices of the Lord God of Israel, made by fire, are their inheritance, as he said unto them. And Moses gave unto the tribe of the children of Reuben inheritance according to their families. And their coast was from Eroer, that is on the bank of the river Arnon, and the city that is in the midst of the river, and all the plain by Medeba. Heshbon and all her cities that are in the plain, Dibon, and Bamoth Baal, and Beth Baal Maon, and Jehaza, and Kedemoth, and Mephaoth, and Kirjathayim, and Sibma, and Zareth Shehar, and the Mount of the Valley, and Beth Peor, and Ashtoth Pisgah, and Beth Jeshemoth. And all the cities of the plain, and all the kingdom of Sihon, king of the Amorites, which reigned in Heshbon, whom Moses smote with the princes of Midian, Evi, and Rechem, and Zur, and Hur, and Reba, which were dukes of Sihon, dwelling in the country. Balaam also, the son of Beor, the soothsayer, did the children of Israel slay with the sword among them that were slain by them. And the border of the children of Reuben was Jordan, and the border thereof. This was the inheritance of the children of Reuben after their families, the cities and their villages thereof. And Moses gave inheritance unto the tribe of Gad, even unto the children of Gad according to their families. And their coast was Jazer, and all the cities of Gilead, and half the land of the children of Ammon, unto Eroer, that is before Rabbah. And from Heshbon unto Ramoth Mizpeh, and Betonim, and from Mahanaim unto the border of Debir. And in the valley Beth Aram, and Beth Nimrah, and Succoth, and Zaphon, the rest of the kingdom of Sihon, king of Heshbon, Jordan and his border, even at the edge of the sea of Kinnereth, on the other side Jordan eastward. This is the inheritance of the children of Gad after their families, the cities, and their villages. And Moses gave inheritance unto the half-tribe of Manasseh, and this was the possession of the half-tribe of the children of Manasseh by their families. And their coast was from Mahanaim, all Bashan, all the king of Og, king of Bashan, and all the towns of Jair, which are in Bashan, threescore cities, and Afgilead, and Ashtaroth, and Edrei, cities of the king of Og in Bashan, were pertaining unto the children of Makir, the son of Manasseh, even to the one half of the children of Makir by their families. These are the countries which Moses did distribute for inheritance in the plains of Moab, on the other side Jordan, by Jericho eastward. But to the tribe of Levi, Moses gave not any inheritance. The Lord God of Israel was their inheritance, as he said unto them. And these are the countries which the children of Israel inherited in the land of Canaan, which Eleazar the priest, and Joshua the son of Nun, and the heads of the fathers of the tribes of the children of Israel distributed for inheritance to them. By lot was their inheritance, as the Lord commanded, by the hand of Moses, for nine tribes, and for the half-tribe. For Moses had given the inheritance of two tribes, and a half-tribe on the other side Jordan. But unto the Levites he gave none inheritance among them. For the children of Joseph were two tribes, Manasseh and Ephraim. Therefore they had no part unto the Levites in the land, save cities to dwell in, with their suburbs, for their cattle, and for their substance. As the Lord commanded Moses, so the children of Israel did, and they divided the land. Then the children of Judah came unto Joshua and Gilgal, and Caleb the son of Jephunneh, and the Kenizzite, said unto them, Thou knowest the thing that the Lord said unto Moses, the man of God, concerning me and thee, in Kadesh Barnea. Forty years old was I, when Moses the servant of the Lord sent me from Kadesh Barnea to espy out the land and I brought him word again, as it was in mine heart. Nevertheless, my brethren that went up with me made the heart of the people melt, but I wholly followed the Lord my God. And Moses swore on that day, saying, Surely the land whereon thy feet have trodden shall be thine inheritance, and thy children's forever, because thou hast wholly followed the Lord my God. And now, behold, 
Lord hath kept me alive, as he said, these forty and five years, even since the Lord spake this word unto Moses, while the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness. And now, lo, I am this day fourscore and five years old. As yet I am as strong this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me, as my strength was then, even so is my strength now, for war, both to go out and to come in. Now therefore give me this mountain, whereof the Lord spake in that day. For thou heardest in that day how the Anakims were there, and that the cities were great and fenced, if so be the Lord will be with me. Then I shall be able to drive them out, as the Lord said. And Joshua blessed him, and gave unto Caleb the son of Jephunneh Hebron for an inheritance. And Hebron therefore became the inheritance of Caleb the son of Jephunneh the Kenazite unto this day, because that he wholly followed the Lord God of Israel. The name of Hebron before was Kirjath Arba, which Arba was a great man among the Anakims, and the land had rest from war. Psalm 79, a psalm of Asaph. O God, the heathen are come into thine inheritance. Thy holy temple have they defiled. They have laid Jerusalem on heaps. The dead bodies of thy servants have they given to be meat unto the fowls of the heaven, the flesh of thy saints unto the beasts of the earth. Their blood have they shed like water round about Jerusalem, and there was none to bury them. We are become a reproach to our neighbors, a scorn and a derision to them that are round about us. How long, Lord, wilt thou be angry forever? Shall thy jealousy burn like fire? Pour out thy wrath upon the heathen that have not known thee, and upon the kingdom that have not called upon thy name. For they have devoured Jacob, and laid waste his dwelling place. O remember not against us for our iniquities. Let thy tender mercy speedily prevent us, for we are brought very low. Help us, O God, of our salvation, for the glory of thy name, and deliver us, and purge away our sins, for thy name's sake. Wherefore, should the heathen say, Where is their God? Let him be known among the heathen in our sight, by the revenging of the blood of thy servants which is shed. Let the sighing of the prisoner come before thee. According to the greatness of thy power, preserve thou those that are appointed to die. And render unto our neighbors sevenfold into their bosom their reproach, wherewith they have reproached thee, O Lord. So we thy people, and sheep of thy pasture, will give thee thanks for ever. We will show forth thy praise to all generations. Proverbs chapter 14, verses 26-30 through 30. In the fear of the Lord is strong confidence, and his children shall have a place of refuge. The fear of the Lord is a fountain to life, to depart from the snares of death. In the multitude of people is the king's honor, but in the want of people is the destruction of the prince. He that is slow to wrath is of great understanding, but he that is hasty of spirit exalteth folly. A sound heart is the life of the flesh, but envy the rottenness of the bones. Ecclesiasticus chapter 13 he that toucheth pitch shall be defiled therewith, and he that hath fellowship with a proud man shall be like unto him. Burden not thyself above thy power while thou livest, and have no fellowship with one that is mightier and richer than thyself. For how agree the kettle and the earthen pot together? For if the one be spent against the other, it shall be broken. The rich man hath done wrong, yet he threateneth withal. The poor is wronged, and he must entreat also. If thou be for his profit, he will use thee. But if thou have nothing, he will forsake thee. If thou have anything, he will live with thee. Yea, he will make thee bare, and will not be sorry for it. If he have need of thee, he will deceive thee, and smile upon thee, and put thee in hope. He will speak thee fair, and say, What wantest thou? And he will shame thee by his meats, until he have drawn thee dry twice or thrice. And at the last he will laugh thee to scorn. Afterward, when he seeth thee, he will forsake thee, and shake his head at thee. Beware that thou be not deceived, and brought down in thy jollity. If thou be invited of a mighty man, withdraw thyself, and so much the more will he invite thee. Press thou not upon him, lest thou be put back. Stand not afar off, lest thou be forgotten. Affect not to be made equal unto him in talk, and believe not his many words. For with much communication will he tempt thee, and smiling upon thee will get out thy secrets. But cruelly will he lay up thy words, and will not spare to do thee hurt, and to put thee in prison. Observe and take good heed, for thou walkest in peril of thy overthrowing. When thou hearest these things, awake in thy sleep. Love the Lord all thy life, and call upon him for thy salvation. Every beast loveth his like, and every man loveth his neighbor. 
all flesh consorteth according to kind, and a man will cleave to his like. What fellowship hath the wolf with the lamb, so the sinner with the godly? What agreement is there between the hyena and a dog? And what peace between the rich and the poor? As the wild ass is the lion's prey in the wilderness, so the rich eat up the poor. As the proud hate humility, so doth the rich abhor the poor. A rich man beginning to fall is held up of his friends, but a poor man being down is thrust also away by his friends. When a rich man is fallen, he hath many helpers. He speaketh things not to be spoken, and yet men justify him. The poor man slipped, and yet they rebuked him too. He spake wisely, and could have no place. When a rich man speaketh, every man holdeth his tongue, and look what he saith. They extol it to the clouds. But if the poor man speak, they say, What fellow is this? And if he stumble, they will help to overthrow him. Riches are good unto him that hath no sin, and poverty is evil in the mouth of the ungodly. The heart of man changes his countenance, whether it be for good or evil, and a merry heart maketh a cheerful countenance. A cheerful countenance is a token of a heart that is in prosperity, and the finding out of parables is a wearisome labor of the mind.